So we have what we're trying to determine from this sample of heights, a whole bunch of descriptive statistics, and then we want to create a frequency table and a histogram. One of the first things that I'm going to want to do, because we're looking for quartiles, and even though this is just a nice kind of thing to do, is I want to organize my data from smallest to largest. So let's start off looking at that. So I have my x, I'm going to have my observation number, and my x variable is height in centimeters. So carrying that down uh, over that bit there, uh, what's my smallest value? 129. Okay, so 129 centimeters. After that, what's my next? Um, we can cross them off as we go. 129, my next one is 165, 182, 200, and finally 214. I then have my observation number of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I have 5 observations. Together. So let's make that a little bit better. What we can do is we can then sum all of these because, well, okay, yes, we want Q1, Q2, Q3. I want to find the mean first because, well, it just seems like a natural place to do it. So if we take the sum of all of this, so we add that all up 129, 165, 182, 200. 214, what do we get? We have 890. Okay, big thing I forgot to mention, yes, I'm going through this right now. I'd recommend you try to give this a go with what you have already. See if you can do it. If you get stuck, then okay, unpause the video, see where you're at, or watch through me doing it once. Go back, start a new piece of paper, and try it again on your own. Make sure that you can follow through an example like this and get the right results. So, okay, what do we have? We have a sample of heights. So that means that for my mean, I want to calculate x bar. x bar is going to be the sum of my x's. So that's going to be 890 divided by 5. And so 890 divided by 5, that's going to give me a mean of 178 centimeters. So, okay, I have my mean. There we go. X bar. Uh, let's write that down. 178 centimeters. From here, just because, well, just where I'm going, I want to carry on with the variance standard deviation, and then maybe I'll backtrack and do my coordinates. Again, really, for the most part, a lot of these can be started in any order. So let's go draw another column here, and I'm going to work out my x minus x bar. So this is my deviation from me. Keep in mind, okay, I want variance. What is my variance? Sample variance, right, because I'm dealing with a sample of heights, is going to be the summation of x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1. So that's what I'm trying to work out in this case. So let's see. 129 minus 178. I get negative 49. 165 minus 178. I get negative 30. 182 minus 178, now I'm into the positives, I have 4, 200 minus 178, well that's not too bad, that's just going to be 22, and 214 minus 178, that's going to be 36. Okay, again, if you want, you can do a quick test, make sure you got all these right, you can add them up quickly. So 49 plus negative 13 plus 4 plus, plus 36, and we get 0. Whew, we did something right. Good. Next column, we want to get the numerator here. We want the squared deviation. So x minus x bar squared. We're going to do 49 squared. That's going to give us 2401. 13 squared, 169, sorry, that's a 4, don't want to mess that up later. 
Uh, 4 squared, that's going to be our 16. 22 squared is going to be 484. And 36 squared is going to be 1296. So now we want to do get the sum of our squared deviation. So we're going to sum this up. Let's just start at the bottom and work up. So 1296 plus 484 plus 16 plus 1 plus 2401 is going to give me 4366. Again, that is going to be my numerator here. Okay, so if we take that value, we can throw it into this. And let's take a look at that. So we have our variance of x is going to be 4,366, right? That is our sum of squared deviations all over n minus 1. So what do we have? We have five observations, so all over 4. So what do we get? We have a variance then. Our variance is going to be 191.50. And so if we take the square root of that to get our standard deviation, we get a standard deviation of, I'm going to round that to 33.04. The actual one there would be 33.0378, on and on and on. So what do we have? We had 10. 91.50, technically that's square centimeters, and then a standard deviation of 33.04. So, okay, we've got the first few done here. We could be like, hey, okay, since we're going this direction, let's just jump down and do skewness. Keep in mind our skewness formula. Okay, so we have x bar, that's 178. We have our standard deviation, that's 33.04. Oh, we haven't figured out our median yet. What's our median? Well, keep in mind that's our 50th percentile. That's our second quartile. So before we can jump down and do skewness, we are going to have to work out this value of the median, our quartiles first. So how do we do that? Well, we need to order our data set. That's our first step. We've already done that. Good. Next step is we need to find the location. So let's use the location formula. We're looking for location of the 25th, location of the 50th, and location of the 75th percentile, right? First quartile, 25th percentile on top. So what do we have in each case? We have 5 plus 1 times 25 over 100. 5 plus 1 times 50 over 100, and then 5 plus 1 times 75 over 100. So, okay, we worked through that. 6 times 0.25 is going to be 1.53 and 4.5. Keep in mind, these values, these are the locations. This is where we're going to look to to find our percentiles. These are not the percentiles themselves. So, okay, this guy here, it's a whole number. Oh, I don't even have to do anything fun. I can just go straight and find that guy. So whole number observation three, I'm going to have my median right there as 182. Okay. Location 25 is going to be 1.5. That's going to be right halfway in between these two guys there. So again, using our little formula there, this is going to be the value of our P. That 0.5 is going to be our weight. So I can get my value of my 25th is going to be 129 times 1 minus 0.5 plus... 165 times 0.5. And what is that going to work out to? That's going to be 147. So right in between these two, my first quartile is going to be 147. I'm going to do the same thing for my third quartile, found at 4.5, halfway between 4 and 5. 
So doing that again, that's going to give me a value of 207 and quartile 3, 207. So now I have my quartiles and I can work out, okay, what is my skewness? Let's take a look at that, skewness. So taking these values here, what do we have? So my skew is going to be three times, uh, what's my mean, 178, minus my median of 182, all over my standard deviation, which my standard deviation where I'd written that down, 33.04. Okay, so before I even calculate this, right, let's take a look. My mean is to the left of my median, so that is I have some really small values pulling this mean down. I'm going to expect this to be skewed to the left, negatively skewed. And if we work that out, we have 178 minus 182 times 3 divided by 33.04, and I get a skewness of negative, okay, so we're negatively skewed to the left, 0 0.363. So okay, we have a slight negative skew to that. It's not very much. We're still in the zero range. We're pretty close to being symmetric. We just have this little bit of skew going on there. So we have that. So let's write that value down. Negative 0 0.36. Three for our skewness. Okay, last thing we want to do is we want to create a frequency table and a histogram. So let's do that to finish off. What we need to do to create our frequency table and histogram is we need to use our rule of 2 to the k, right, such that we want some value such that 2 to the k is just greater than or equal to our sample size. So if we play around with that, 2 to the 2 equals 4. Okay, we have a sample size of 5, that doesn't work, but 2 to the 3 is 8, so we're going to suggest 3 classes. From here, from 3 classes, we need to figure out what our bin width is going to be. So for bin width, it's just going to be greater than or equal to our max value minus our min value all over our suggestion for k. So what do we have here? My max is 214. My minimum is 129. And my K is 3. So 14 minus 129. All of that divided by 3. And it's going to suggest to me 28.33. Okay, I don't really want to count up by 28.33. That seems like a nightmare. I'm going to suggest a bin width of 30. All right, that's going to be a bit nicer to count up by. So let's go with that. Now let's go and create our actual frequency table. So frequency table, we're going to have our classes, which are height in centimeters. And we're going to be taking that and we're going to be creating the frequency of each of these values. So first class, what's my lowest value? 129. Uh, what's nice to count by? Let's go um, let's go 125. So 125 up to what's 125 and 30? That's 155. Okay. 155, right? Keep in mind this is 125 up to 155. So up to but not including. 155 up to 185, 185 up to 215. And does that cover my, yep, that covers my last one there, and I have my three bins. So now we just need to count our observations and drop them into each one. So between 125 and 155, what do I have? Just the one. Between 155 and 185, let's see. I don't know if that made it better or worse. Maybe let's just uh, fix that up a bit. There we go. 
85, that looks better. So we have 1 and 2. And then between 185 and 215, we have 1 and 2. And all together to sum this, right, we sum to 5, which is how many data points we have. So good, we've got them all. So we have our frequency table here. Great. From this frequency table, we then want to go and create a histogram. So let's go. We have our horizontal. We have our vertical. So our horizontal here, this is uh, heights in centimeters. That's my x variable. And my vertical, this is my frequency of my x variable. And so I'm going to break my horizontal axes. I'm going to start it there at 125. And I'm going to go 125. Oh, what am I doing there? 125, we'll say something like that, 155, 185, and then finally, something like that's 215. 125, 155, 185, and 215. Similarly, breaking this up, going up, now let's just go 1, 2, and three, maybe that's a bit too much white space. Maybe I'd make that a bit shorter, but freehand, we can get our idea here. So what do we have? We have height of one here. We have height of two. And height of two. I overshot that 215 a little bit. Let's fix that. There we go. So we have our first bin one, two, and three for our frequencies. And we have our frequency table. Oh, sorry, frequency table and histogram. If we see this, right, if we want to compare back to our descriptive statistics, we said this was slightly skewed to the left. And we see, yeah, okay, we have our body over here with the tail going off to the left. Kind of hard to see with five observations, but definitely skewed to the left there. What else do we have? We have a mean of 178. So where would 178 fall? Let's just kind of picture that here. 178, this is 185, would be just a little bit shy, maybe something like that. That would be my value of x bar if I wanted to visualize it. What about my median? Where's that guy? Median of 182. Okay, median of 182, well, that's going to be, if that's 185, somewhere like that, that would be my median. And we see, yep, this value of the mean, x bar is being pulled to the left by these small values in that left tail. So we can visualize this on the histogram that we built from. Again, I'd strongly recommend that you try to work through a question like this on your own, that you pause it, you attempt this on your own, you see if you can get the same results, follow through it in the same kind of way. It doesn't have to be in the same order, but same kind of process. If you're getting stuck, if you're not sure where to go, that's when you can unpause it. That's when start to follow along and see if you get the same results. Hopefully that helps. A uh, big part is being able to work through a lot of these descriptive statistics. And what we're going to be taking a look at next is the situation of, well, what happens if we don't have raw data? What happens if we just have this frequency table?